Today I'm talking with Matt Schiller, owner of Park City Boot Room. As you'll soon see, Matt takes a different approach to his boot fitting business. Let's get right to it. So I'm in Park City again today with uh, Quest for Perfect Stance, and today I'm meeting with Matt Schiller of Park City Boot Room. And uh, Matt, thanks for uh, taking the time. Good to see you. Nice to hang you. with me he, and put up with my questions and stuff today. Wanted to start a little bit with kind of a backstory. How did you get to be sitting right here with your own uh, boot fitting clientele and, and tell me how you got here. Yeah, so I think um, it's, it's an amazing little background and it's different than I would say 99% of the boot fitters or boot shops. Um, I did a fair amount of time teaching skiing. I did a, a lot of coaching, Park City Ski Team, all the way up through FIS. Um, I worked for three different manufacturers, Lang, Dina Star, Nordica Race Director, Atomic Race Director. Um, spent multiple years with the Men's World Cup squad. So in over 26 years, um, I've always been in the service and, and coaching and instructor role. So you end up um, building a little bit different repertoire into boot fitting. And so when this shop is geared predominantly for racers and pros, because we can speak the same language, I can help them pass a level three, I can help a U16, you know, develop a different skill or the next games athlete, um, you know, pull off a new trick. And, and because we, we've seen them on the snow, we know what they're doing, we can take what they want to do and build it into a boot using their language or, or a little higher level language. Um, so this, this shop is predominantly a pro shop, race shop, and a very little public on purpose and it's just a source for athletes to come in and fine-tune their equipment. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time because you've got a, uh, a perspective that I haven't seen yet in this little, uh, my little quest, um, but I'm, I'm thinking that the general public needs to hear about where the, uh, the pros think it all is. I would say we're working in, in half to one degree top corrections, and that is not so much what the athlete needs or what they measure. So there's a pretty distinct line in my head where the majority of folks are on one side of the line where they need a little help. They're built a certain way, they're slightly broken. We need to help them get into a more uh, efficient stance. Mm -hmm. Then you have this other side of the line, which I tend to deal with 95% of the time, is athletes who are disciplined and are controlled and want a product to do something different per discipline, per snow condition. And so the stance quest in here becomes more about making, helping the boot feel a certain way versus correcting them. Okay. They can ski on a rental ski, on a, on a dull fat ski and rip off arcs, mm -hmm. but they want a little bit more bite at the top. They want a little easier release. They're in a speed, uh, event or they're a slalom skier or they're a big mountain skier and they want the boot to work a certain way okay. and so that correction for me in here with them is more about augmenting their product to work differently versus their particular need does how that make sense that, yeah how much of that happens within the boot uh, versus uh, outside the boot with the sole planing and and or our cantology wedges uh, do you are you subscribing to the boot the ankle needs to be stacked neutrally in there or do you do anything in the footbeds of the boot board yeah i would say that um and often doing psa clinics or, or working with instructors the, the the magic bullet or the the always the the, the easy go-to is my alignment's off my alignment's off but when you kind of take the package apart and you look at it um I need to make sure, one, the footbed, that is paramount. The footbed is sound, and their mechanics of their ankle are appropriate for the boot. They're sitting in it well. They're matching up the hinges. They have the proper range of motion. Those two things are, regardless of product, have to be addressed earlier. It's got to be optimal before you go to this. Correct. And then fitting is fitting, so we'll skip over that. But um, another often overlooked piece of this puzzle, which uh, hugely affects what we're going to end up doing on the bottom, is cuff alignment and how their legs track, how they are statically, how their legs move, and where they strike this boot and how they split the difference and how they work within the cuff. That usually supersedes anything we try to do on the bottom first. So footbed and cuff alignment are by far anything before we talk about here. And, and, and so I think, um, so yeah, so that's, that's always the front side look. Now you get to the bottom, right? And each boot has its own out-of-the-box stance to begin with. Mm -hmm. 
and some boots are more aggressive, still hanging on to an older theory. Some boots are now been brought more toward a zero. Um, I would say for the most part, we work within zero mm -hmm. and then we are, give it either a half more or so to make it more aggressive or a half or so less to make it a little more playful or loose. I think you're telling me that these, the folks that are your primary clientele are kind of naturally dialed. They, they wouldn't have gotten where they are if they were as messed up as, say, me with two and a half and three. Um, they're athletes and their bodies are pretty much right there and you're fine tuning their stance as opposed to the general public where we see a bigger, uh, wider distribution of, of, of uh, I agree, and I don't want to discredit any right. need for alignment for the general public or the ability to manipulate a boot to just help somebody stand flatter or move more efficiently. But I would, yeah, but I I'm, I'm tend to be working on the other side of the line where we're, we're disciplined athletes and we're, we're trained athletes and they are fundamentally sound. And now they just want, it's, it's like a race car for me. You know, it's understeer, oversteer. If you turn that wheel, does it bite or does it drift? Do you want to tip this boot in quicker or do you want to let it ride a little bit? And it, it, that's, that's where we're fine tuning this right. world. So when, as you're dialing people in, kind of back to that optimal stance, where does it end up being for these guys? Are they uh, slightly inside? When you're done with them, they walk out the door, I, I'm kind of working from flat as neutral. We turn left, we turn right, I guess right. Um, if you're not turning at all, you're neutral, you're flat. If you're standing there flat, you don't want your skis going that, I mean, the definition of neutral is flat in my mind. So when you, when a guy leaves your shop, are they flat or are they a little bit in? I mean, or, and does it vary by discipline and, and so forth? It's definitely a discipline, much like setting up a base bevel of slalom ski versus a base bevel of a super G ski is, is going to be kind of fundamentally different. So you could argue, yes, a slalom boot had been or is tends to be a little bit more out or aggressive in a speed boot setup tends to be. But that being said, there is a, a pretty good trend in the last two to three years. You look at you know, the Paul Lorenzes and Ryland McGlashans and, and, and that kind of wave of ski instructor um, image that's coming out. You look at um, the development team and, and Sasha in the last couple of years and trying to develop a lot more rotation, heat, femur rotation, feel, pivot, um, movement, adjustment at the top of the turn. So we're taking kind of that fundamental theory and I would say, dare I say, it's coming a little bit more in than you would expect. Okay. Zero is happy. Right. Zero is, is great. And yeah. when you say zero, we're talking flat. Neutral, 90, Neutral flat. right? Okay. Um, and so if, if we're guessing or we're starting somebody out or if we're just setting up a boot to then work through, zero. Mm -hmm. Cuff alignment, footbed, okay. but zero. And from there, we can adjust half, right. plus right. or minus, depending on snow condition, feel, blah, blah, blah. So you're always working within, you said, one degree at the onset of this thing. And one degree, for those out in the public, ends up being about 50 thousandths of an inch. Um, crazy. But how do you, uh, how do you make that assessment? What, what are your measuring techniques? I mean, dare I say that it's, it's a little more um, old school. Right, so I have a, a typical alignment board, old school lines on a board, flat, okay. hard surface. Oh, so yep, and uh, and and you know, kind of the standard center of the knee, seam of the boot. Okay, and I'm getting a, a, a position, right? And the the stand T square for that. Yeah. Okay. A framing square. Um, okay. If we could call that center seam. So all those boots get molded in clamshells, and there's usually a seam down the down the center of the guys that helps. Correct. So, you know, we're we're looking for center knee up here, and we're kind of getting a dot, right? And then, you know, really as I'm kind of moving along, you know, we're kind of uh, really eyeing in from the dot to where that falls. You know, so I'm just kind of looking at that dot going to there. And then it's just a matter of, you know, moving that boot out of here and remeasuring and going, okay, we got, you know, that change. Mm -hmm. 
and then it becomes, you know, better one, better two. Yeah. And the other thing, I, are those I mean, the old marker? Yeah, these are just yeah. marker shapes. You know, halves, ones, one and a half, right? The other thing we have to recognize is that whatever you do to one foot is going to change the top plate. So I think of this as racking a wall, right? This is a construction game. And so right now, if we do something to one foot and move it out, the wall, the whole wall is going to rack. So your hips or the top plate yep. is also going to adjust over that foot. So just to say you need something on one foot, you have to watch what it's going to do to this left foot too. So it's kind of a Rob Peter to Paul, you know, if we, if we go there with one, do we have to actually come back, you know, and kind of bring that a little bit more. We're giving the foot some purchase, but we're not just jacking the whole package over too far. Mm -hmm. So we, we go a little here, but we also kind of adjust back so the top plate remains equal over the center of the feet. And so all that gives us, the athlete and myself, is a reference. You don't need to be on the line. You don't need to be a half a centimeter inside the line. You don't need to be anywhere according to the line, but it's giving us a reference. From there, it becomes like an eye doctor game where it's like better one, better two. Mm -hmm. yep. And so I just care that they are flat and they are symmetrical and they are neutral base of the foot in the boot, hips. I mean, so we are looking for whatever they're flat, whatever they're are neutral. They, are they standing on both feet or one feet when you're asking them better? Yes. Two-footed. Two-footed. Two -footed. Um, some people will kind of go through their, you know, can I balance a little bit better on the, on, right. on the one foot or so? And they might try to feel that. But it's a very static environment, so I'm not putting even a ton of weight on what they feel in here, I'm just giving them a sense of that's a little in, that's a little flatter, that's a little out. Mm -hmm. um, well, since you're dealing with such these, the finer measurements, uh, that kind of begs the question, when do you route the boot? Do you send them up on the hill? Since it's within the tolerance of the binding, since you're talking half to one degree, and the ISO standard is like on the toe, what, 19 plus or minus one. Yeah. Um, so technically within the binding and safety they could ski a half a degree on and see how it felt do you do you send them to the hill how does that work um, after measurement we might come to a, an understanding of where they could try mm -hmm. often I'm not doing it to the boot prior to them skiing okay. if it's a boot which we see often in here the the over din lugs right the World Cup boots the race boots that are kind of overbuilt we have the choice to move towards a correction that we think will work and use that extra material they gave us to start mm -hmm. that angle and yeah. then din it. But I will often send them in the stock boot, no lifters, right. because they have a good coach and they have good video and they have the time and the, and, and the education to maybe play with a couple of tape strips or things like that. And I want them to really, I trust them to come back and say, boy, I put three strips of duct tape on my outside on the right foot and it, it, it felt better, it worked better. I saw a video, my coach said yes. So um, I, 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 I specifically punt the alignment question until after they ski. What or the routing question, yeah. yeah. You bet. Yep. I think that's a kind of a luxury that you have and it kind of works out cool because at this very high end of the market, if you will, the high performance end, um, you have the liberty of working with just these tiny adjustments that the general public, the, you know, when you get into two, two and a half degrees of correction, it's flat out unsafe and it, you know, gets you into, you know, pinching, potentially rocking. This, you're not going to get some edge control because the binding is stressed so much. They need to route before they go to the hill if they're talking larger. See if this makes sense. Um, a production ski on the wall out of plastic. Mm -hmm plus or minus a little bit from the factory finish, but you're talking maybe a two and one, right? One degree on the base, two right. degree on the side. Mm -hmm. A slalom ski, for reference, is 0.5 on the base, generally. Could be even flatter, but mm -hmm. 0.5 is kind of wow. a standard. GS is 0 0.7 as kind of a fundamental starting point. So 0 0.5 slalom, 0 0.7 GS, and maybe one, 1 1.25 for speed. Okay. okay. You would never take your slalom base bevel and put it on a speed course you'd grab. Yeah. And you'd never take your GS 
or your super G ski and put on a slalom course because you'd slide for days before engagement. Right. So for me, that same relationship of base bevel, 0.571, is the same as a half degree, quarter degree. Mm -hmm. That's why my corrections are all kind of within one. Mm -hmm. Because a good skier on a solid surface with um, well-prepped skis can feel that half, quarter, whatever. And that's usually enough for a good skier to augment a feeling or just a feeling of that boot. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that kind of makes sense, but it's a, it's a tighter tolerance in a much more controlled environment with good snow mm -hmm. and, and, and good prep skis. So, I mean, yeah. It's, so it's a, a, um, a lot of boot fitters, to get a handle on that soft surface action, use a floating device, the Kaiser device or Kantco's uh, wands. Um, you don't use that because you're within this, this small thing. Do you have an opinion about the use of those devices? I don't need them. <laughs> I, I, all I would say is that um, we're not looking for a final product here. We're looking for a general feeling and a, and a, and a, and a and, yep, an incremental a, an adjustment. Something those wands do, maybe this will start you thinking, is that it does allow, uh, and maybe you you do it with your you know, you compared it to an eye doctor, but as the skier flexes in his boots, the dot that they put on center knee mass tracks, and you can see the line a little bit more dynamically. You have with your T square here a snapshot of the relationship between the dot and the T square, and then the guy starts flexing, and you basically use your trained eye. I would say that's more, that's the half a step back to the cuff alignment. Okay. So as long as that leg does track and we're watching the, the direction. Okay, back the track, then is when you dealt with. That's more for me in a, in a cuff relationship. Okay. So if they're, if they're biasing a cuff or the biasing a boot to one direction, it's going to look like they're off. But until that cuff is moved somewhat for them to match mm -hmm. center and kind of stay efficient in that cuff, then the bottom is somewhat mitigated. And I, I, again, I don't think many people are walking in on the outsides of their feet or walking in on the insides of their feet. It's kind of where that tib and fib is coming off the ankle has a little bit different relationship to the foot. Mm -hmm. um, so if the cuff is adjusted and the bottom is kind of left to flatten out, um, then from there, their anatomy is going to be, be pulling that boot right and left and driving it. And uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know if those those wands and, and the soft um, pillows that you stand on, yeah. it does help to settle things in and give it a little bit more um, realistic range. But I, I, the, the, material, the surface that we're working with here is consistent, more consistent. And uh, forget all that. Honestly, it's, well, it's always about ski on snow. Right, exactly. And you get around that by sending them off to ski in this, come back and we'll We'll you know adjust it some more. So you have a very uh, you have a cool situation because I think in the end the most the highest performance uh, evaluation of stance possible is when you have the trial and error. But so many people have to commit and route off the boots to make them safe that they cannot uh, really gradually dial it in over days of skiing like like you can when you're working with the, the so such fine tuning. I, I, I gotta just kind of. I gotta toot the horn a hair because there's questions about what skis do on snow that I can ask, they can answer. We're in the same language of that respect and I could see what they're doing on snow. And so the three questions are always top of the turn. Mm -hmm. What is the boot doing at the top of the turn? Can you engage at will or does it, does it uh, skip or does it slide a little bit? I wanna know what the top of the turn engagement feels like for you. I want to know what the middle of the turn feels like. Can you balance on that boot? Are you catching yourself? Is it double turning on you? Mm -hmm. The end of the turn, do you converge? Do you diverge? What do your skis do in transition coming out? Mm -hmm. Those are telltales about how this fulcrum of your leg right. and this product is right. engaging on or off, right? And so I, I just don't know how else to say that, but talking to an athlete, looking at video and saying, man, top of the turn, it just looks like you have to inclinate a little more. You have to rotate a little more to get that right foot to hook up where you want. If the boot was X, it would 
bite a little sooner for you. Or at the end of the turn where you're just inside and moving across the hill, if you're losing that ski, that boot's wanting to stand up and go that way. We need to kind of help it come back in with you. So asking the right questions and understanding what the skis are doing and how they're moving and where they are in the development pipeline curve really helps me adjust, well, we still have fundamental issues that we need to work on, or we can fine tune this product to give you that half degree bite, release, movement, playability, whatever you want to call it, whatever they're seeking for. So do you see that um, stance is evolving? Uh, we, you know, I'm, I've lived much longer. I've seen, I've seen, I've skied on spades, no, no heels, no toes. I've Reikley's and Rosemont's and all kinds of crap throughout my life. And obviously a, a huge difference in how we ski now that skis have a much uh, deeper side cut they're more shaped before, you know, we were race them to get across the fall line. The fall line was like the enemy. And once you got across the fall line, it was, now you got to figure out a way to arrest your skid into a, some sort of a carve. And now with our little toe edges so much more in play and such, we don't have to have these big rotational mo movements. We don't have to have huge unweighting or huge, you know, it's so much more subtle to have the steering mo motions in your big and little toe edges. Um, how do you think that has played in people's desire for stance? Has it changed uh, what they're looking for? The instructors maybe especially. There was a, <clears throat> call it 10 years ago, there was a really hard push, 15 years ago, whatever. There was a really hard push as the skis developed shape and and to, to really, uh, be kind of a very very railroad tracky very lateral mm -hmm. they wanted engagement boots were being knocked out and you know and and so it was a much more kind of one-dimensional edge on edge off feel mm -hmm. and i do think it's come full circle but it's not come full circle in upper body um, nuances or help um, all we're trying to do with the longer radi longer length longer radius skis that are that have come out um, you could see it in Ligeti. I mean, he was really on the forefront of taking that longer radius ski and figuring out how to get it out and get it adjusted to more fall line early so that he can apply the pressure in a deeper right. and use more of the fall line to, 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 for momentum to push against. And so I just feel like there is now a, a good push. You look at modern slalom, you know, you could, Christopherson, you, these guys have developed a little tighter stance and a little more top of the turn plainness, looseness, mm -hmm. um, because again, the product is ridiculously laterally stiff. So as long as they have a little more ability to, to touch and feel and manipulate that ski where they want it before engagement, I think that's where the trend has come. So, you know, back to where do people set up? It used to be, well, 0.5 was, you know, golden, or, you know, let's try to set you up one for slalom. It's really laterally powerful right. at top. Those are zero, if not maybe even minus, on a good defined athlete. So this is taking the athlete out of the equation and just putting the product in a fundamental starting point to to open up the modern technique. And I feel like, yeah, it's zero to minus, uh, just a hair um, for, yeah, for a lot of product. From one, because I think when you give it to the inside edge, you're stealing it from the outside edge in the or out the uphill edge of the inside ski. Another lost concept possibly is the inverse or counterintuitive relationship with canning to edging and, and power, right? So the more that the boot is in or the more that your leg is inside the boot, the longer it actually takes for you to engage. It's a bigger base bevel. You have to overcome this angle to finally engage it. The more that your fulcrum, your knee, your body, and the boot is set up a little aggressive or out, the easier it is to get to your inside edge. The minute you twitch, you've right. got power. Right. And so, so so the other part of this puzzle is, yeah, whether you want to go further in or further out for power to one side, you do lose a little bit of the other side. Of the other side. So I guess in my mind, I'm still thinking this is an ice skate blade. Mm -hmm. And there's a really defined, okay, give a little here to add this, but don't take away that. Right. Um, and, and, so, and so, yeah, it's just small increments make a big difference. So what, are there things that we should be talking about here? I mean, that you message, any messages that you think the public needs to know more about that? Uh... Well, the, the, the beauty of 
Cantology for, for sure is that everybody can't be in a lace line or plug boot and have this tolerance and have this reaction. So I usually say I build boots for two minutes for one run, uh -huh. right? That's where these boots come alive. For the public, for instructors out there all day, for you know a, a big mountain skier, these guys got to be in their boots all day and they're going to be training repetitively and working, working. And so there's always the one-off pro boot, right? Not the lace liner full deal, but there's the, the, the RXs and the, you know, the regular Raptors and, and being able to take this boot and move it a little bit wider with a step in liner, which now have the ability for Cantology to work within here. We can give the same fine tune feeling to a pro who's in a boot every day for multiple yeah, hours and and scenarios, right? They could be skiing bumps, they could be skiing power, they can be you know doing a high performance carving clinic. But so they're in a, a, a fund, they're in a, a professional package. But now Cantology comes along and these fine tuned adjustments that we're working with with the highest end, they can use some of that in in their everyday skiing, and um, that's I think the be the be the biggest benefit. Well, it's been a fun business to have for the last ten years, and we're just pushing it ahead <laughs> yeah I, I appreciate what you guys do I, I love the 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 collab with with the manufacturers you know the more manufacturers say we want this boot to work and we want you to take it to a shop that we can trust will help you fine-tune it so why not work with a brand that's gonna um, give us the tools mm -hmm. to model you know to, to mold right. inline adjustments perfect great scenario hey Matt uh, thanks for meeting with me today. Uh, I think you got a very cool situation here working with a, the best of the best in terms of the ski world. Um, I hope they find a way to your door here. Uh, you've been uh, enlightening and it's fun to get your perspective and to hear about uh, how these guys really get dialed in at the top end has been pretty fun. I appreciate it. It's, um, it's very much not a retail shop on purpose. It's very much a coach's hat or an instructor's hat or just a, a pit crew serviceman for athletes you know I, they've already assumed that they want to get their stuff dialed so i'm here to just work them through look at video talk to their coach and 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 just fine-tune product you know this um these guys are all good skiers guys and girls are all good skiers so i'm not going to tell them what they need right. but they can certainly say i have a deficiency here or i'm trying to adjust this or add this and that's where this shop works because we're we're, we're 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 helping them yeah evolve I hope you've enjoyed this interview with Matt. There's lots more to come from Park City as the quest for perfect stance continues.